Volumes are made up of voxels. Just like polygons are made, or polygons or geometry is made up of points. The more points you have in a geometry, the higher the resolution. It's the same, it's similar for volumes. The more voxels you have, the higher the resolution of the volume. Now to demonstrate this, we start off with a cube, a volume box. It has 5 by 5 by 5, 125 voxels. That's because for the volume, I specify 5 for the max axes. That defines this number here, the um, x, y, z axes. Now, if I go like 6, this will go 6 by 6 by 6. 7, 7 by 7, 7, 7. Now, I want to, what if I do it by size, by voxel size, this voxel size? I'm going to make it point 0.1. Now this changes point one. This changes the resolution of uh, the axes automatically. Because the voxel size is smaller, we can now fit more voxels into this cube of volume. So if I increase the size of each voxel, number of voxels go down. So point one, I have a thousand voxels. But since each voxel is, if I increase this value, each voxel is bigger, so the amount of voxels that can fit in this cube has decreased, and now in only 125 voxels can fit in this cube. Now I'm gonna go with uh, max axes for now. So we have a polygon box, and I'm gonna fit this volume into this box. So all 125 voxels from this volume, I'm going to try and shove it into this box using match size. So in match size, if you check the scale to fit and translate, it will try and best to stretch, uh, move, and fit it into this box. So that's this blue uh, wireframe highlighted here. Number of voxels does not change. What does this actually look like? Now it looks like this. This is actually so. This is an illustration of what voxels look like if they were to be drawn clear cut. Each cube, smaller cube here, is a voxel. Represents a voxel in illustration purposes. This is not volumes. This is uh, this is a polygon. But I'm only for illustration purposes. I just wanted to show you. So actually, let me cover that. So if we were to draw this, draw volumes in clear cut voxel size without um, representing the, uh, the density. There is one, two, three, four, five. So that's the five here. One, two, three, four, five. That's five here. One two, three, four, five. So five by five by five. This is a five cubic meter, uh, not cubic meter, um, a five by five by five cube. Now I have points from volume here. So what this node does, it fills this box with points. Now how much, how, how many points do, do I want it to fill? There's a point separation. So the, the, this is the gap. This point separation is the gap between each point, which is very similar to what we have here in volumes. If I choose by size, this is point two size. The smaller this number, the more voxels I can get. I can fit into this cube. So I'm going to increase this back in points. If I decrease this, right now we have 125 points fitting inside this cube. If I decrease this, I get 1,331 points I can fit inside this cube. Lower point separation, more points. Smaller voxel size, more voxels. Volumes. In, in order to illustrate 
volumes. We don't see this. Like, this is not what we see. We see this. Now, how, because this is showing, this is visualizing the density. Now, how do we actually get, but in, in, if you're doing a pyro sim or anything or clouds or something, there's transparency, there's transparency, there's a uh, gradient fills some parts of the clouds or some parts of pyro is more, has a darker color, is more thicker. The cloud is more thicker in some areas than um, less thicker and uh, more transparent in other areas. How is that possible? Well, the density values are different for every voxel, cube of voxel. So it's sort of like this. I've act, um, for illustration purposes. Each cube will have a different value and I've turned it on and off. For simplicity's sake, this is only zero and one. It's either on or off. If you have a very pixelated pyrosim, a very low quality pyrosim, you will start to see the cube of voxels showing. And some of them will appear and some of them will disappear. And that's sort of like what is going on. Each voxel will have, will store a, num a number value. And what that number value represent is, is probably the density. This is of density one, and the empty th spots we see here are of um, zero value. So the empty spots we see over here, they're zero density. You can think of it uh, like that. And these ones here, they have density of one. So that's why we see it clearly. Now this is a very low if this were to be a volume this would be a very low res volume because there's so there's only 125 voxels there's only 125 cubes now i have to say this one more time this is a polygon this is a these this whole part is a polygon everything here is a polygon this is a polygon not a volume this is only used for illustration purposes this is very important i'm only drawing it out like this so you know so you can picture in your head what a volume looks like and what and how voxels are related to volumes and how 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 a volume is made up of voxels so this is only for illustration purposes now this volume is storing the density i create a volume uh with a density value used match size to match the box size if i look inside here it creates a density volume here this is called a density primitive each of these icons are called density primitives uh, sorry not, uh, they're called volume primitives now this holds a single uh, scalar value in each voxel each of these voxels will hold a density value but what if we wanted um, a vector what if we wanted to hold the velocity velocity has three three uh, values three scalar values x y and z so let's see what that looks like so instead of a scalar value i'm going to have a vector because velocity is a vector format i'm going to give this one 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 i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to match it to the size of the cube Now, if I look inside here, this has velocity x, velocity y, velocity z. So there's three primitives, three volume primitives, because each primitive can only hold um, one scalar value. 
And actually, I will change this so it matches the other one as well. So it's the same size. So this, this one over here, this density only has one volume primitive because the density only has one scalar value, but velocity is a vector. So it has three scalar values in, that make up the vector. So that's why we have three volume primitives for this one. Now I've created, um, you can convert a polygon into a volume by using the VDB from polygons. So this node will convert a polygon, which is this cube here, into a volume. If we look carefully, this is now a density. Uh, and now it has a density volume. As opposed for this box, it was just points. There's no, there's no volume. Now for this VDB from polygons, you have a choice of creating a surface VDB or a fog VDB. So I want a fog VDB. Now what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to feed it into this volume vault. Now this volume vault, everything that all the operations inside the volume vault are multi-threaded. So all the operations are run in parallel making this volume bot very fast. It utilizes the multi cores in your computer. So let's go inside. Now what I've done here is I've, this is the origin spot. Now since my cube is right in the middle, the origin is right there. And th this cube is right in the middle, is right in the center of the entire scene. So the origin is in the center of the cube. I take the position, the position of uh, the position of all the voxels, and I subtract it by the origin. What I get is a vector from the position of the voxel to the center. If I take the length of that, it's the distance between the vox of each voxel and the center. Now, the further like. This voxel over here, this voxel would be very far further than this voxel. This voxel will be closer to the center compared to this voxel. So I take all the lengths of every single voxel and then I multiply it with the density. And I feed it back as an output as the density. So the further each voxel is away from the origin, the stronger the density. Now this is not very apparent right now, so that's why I'm going to feed in, I'm going to further multiply this again by a constant. Now this is one, so there's no, there's no change. But if I increase this, you'll start to see a change in the 3D viewer. The density becomes more apparent. If I multiply it by a number less than one, some of the voxels start to disappear. So some of them start becoming, like you can start seeing it empty. So that's uh, how you can control the density. That's how, that's how voxels store density and that's how it can change. If you change the density values of each voxel, you can change the whole volume. This was meant to be a very short refresher on what a volume is and illustrate how volumes are made up of voxels. This video is meant to build up to the next video that I'm working on for height fields. Please stay tuned for the upcoming tutorial on height fields. Thank you for watching and sticking to the end.